Hey everybody, welcome back to Enchanted Bayou. My name is Cassandra. If you're new here, thanks for clicking on this video. You've been with me a while. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me and doing all these spooky fun things with me. Today, I have something really cool that I think that you guys are gonna like. That's something a little bit different. And I don't know if I can dig some of these cases up. If I can find more of these, then we're definitely gonna be doing them because I think it's a lot of fun. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about a man who killed his wife. Now, I don't want to say average, but that does happen, so yeah. However, there's a lot more to this specific story. So, maybe you guys have heard of him. His name is Scott Felater, and his wife was Yarmola. And they were high school sweethearts. Everything seemed wonderful. Everything was going great. No reports of abuse or anything like that until one night, Scott kills his wife. Now, the crazy thing about this case, and we're going to talk about everything that went on and how and what happened, but the crazy thing about this is Scott says he has no recollection of this, even though he did a lot of really weird and strange things. So I'm going to tell you in a minute what all those weird and strange things are, but then it gets even creepier. So did he do this and not know he did it? Did he do it and know that he did it? Or was he possessed, possibly? Because you know what his defense was for this whole thing? Was that he was sleepwalking. And he's had other instances where he's been sleepwalking and harmed someone. And it was actually his sister. And his sister said he looked demonic. Now, it could just be a slip of words or just what she used to describe it. It sounded more like it was just describing it. But... What an interesting word to call your brother. And so I thought we would dive a little bit into the case and then we would do a spirit box session with Ethan and E, who are my spirit guides or guardian angels, whatever you want to call them, and see if they can reach out to Scott's wife and maybe find out what really happened in this case. So let's go ahead and get into the story. So like I mentioned, this couple, perfect couple, right, married right out of high school when they were 20 years old and high school sweethearts, everything was wonderful. This was the only person that Scott had dated. He just saw her and instantly fell in love. They had a few kids, everything was great. They were living a wonderful life. He was really successful engineer. She stayed home and took care of the kids. Everything seemed perfect, at least from the outside. Now, no one can really know what goes on behind closed doors, but even the kids describe everything as a perfect life. So, that's what we're going to go on. So one night, Scott goes to bed, and it's a little before 10 p.m. And him and Yarmula, they go to bed. Kids are asleep, so the kids don't witness any of this, okay? So the kids are asleep. They go to bed. Well, the next thing Scott knows is that he, the cops are there and telling him that he just murdered his wife. So what took place in that time period from the time he went to bed the time that he murdered his wife. Well, this is what we know of how the story goes. So the autopsy showed that she had been stabbed 44 times. And then he drug her out to the pool and she was laying there basically lifeless. Well, a neighbor saw the pool part of this going on because they had heard some of the screams and were worried. So they came outside. Now, Scott didn't know that the neighbors were outside. He didn't see them, but the neighbors are outside watching what's going on and calling the cops. I want to put a short I don't know. My neighbors over the bush yelling and screaming and going on. I looked over the fence and the husband just threw, I believe, the wife to the pool and it looks like she's holding like her under underwater. All right, I'll get somebody out there. Thank you. Thank you. And the neighbors, as witnesses, testified that they saw Scott take his wife, so he put his gloves on and he drags her into the pool and holds her head underwater. And then it gets really crazy. Okay, so maybe you could kill someone in while you're sleepwalking, okay? Maybe that's a possible defense. But what he does next, to me, seems a little fishy. Okay, not a little fishy, really fishy. He goes upstairs to his, his upstairs bedroom. It was a two-story house. He goes upstairs, he takes a shower doesn't take a very good shower because he actually has blood on his ear and behind his ear that the cops notice later. But he takes a shower, he takes his bloody clothes and the knife, he puts them in a Tupperware, 
puts the Tupperware in a black trash bag, okay? And then puts on all new clothes, and he's fresh and clean, a white t-shirt, red pajama bottoms, I think they were red, red pajama bottoms, <laughs> and he thinks everything is fine and that he got away with it. Well, that's when the cops show up, and the cops are like, confront him about it, and he's shocked, he's stunned. He, from the minute that the cops show up, he says that he doesn't remember a single thing that happened. Now, we've got witnesses of him going upstairs, he's got clean clothes on, the cops found the knife, they found the Tupperware, they found all of that, right? So what really happened? We don't know. So he's in trial, and at first, the only defense that he has is that he just doesn't remember what happened that night. Like, he has zero recollection of it. Well, then, during the trial, his mother and his sister are trying to figure out what could have possibly caused this. Where could this possibly have come from? Because as far as they knew, Yarmola and Scott were super happy, wonderful couple that everyone looked to. You know, I guess you could say goals, right? So what could have caused this? And then the sister remembers an incident where when she was younger and Scott was out of high school that Scott was sleepwalking and he he went down the stairs and she was down there and she just I don't know why but she accidentally bumped up against him and he picked her up and like threw her that's when she said that quote he looked almost demonic so in quote right there so was he demonic did he have some kind of attachment from the time he was in high school to later if so, why hasn't it showed up? Does he really remember? I, there's just so many questions with this. And you know what? Scott is not saying a single thing. Scott still maintains, after all this time, because this happened in January of 1997. So after all this time, Scott still maintains his innocence that yes, he killed her, but that he, he does not remember anything about it. And so therefore he should be released. Now, of course he's in jail. And again, not talking. So we need to figure out how this all happened, okay? Now how are we going to do that? Like I said, he's not talking. However, we talk to dead people, so we get to do this. I'm going to try and have Ethan and E go talk to Yarmola. One, because if she died that traumatic, I don't want her to be stuck. So we need to make sure that she's crossed over, that she's doing okay. You know, okay, I guess the best you could be given the situation that happened, but you know, things are different on the other side, so I'm sure she's not concerned about that now. But I think she could probably give us some insight into what really happened that night. And so I want to ask. Now, like I said, we haven't really done this kind of thing before. So I don't know if it's going to work out. But we're going to try it together. I'm going to go through the spirit box after I'm done listening to it. And anything that I hear, I'm going to put in this line, back line right here. Now, if you guys hear anything that I miss, please leave it in the comments below. Because we want to catch everything. However, I will also tell you, not only do I go through this, but I have a person who has been in the military for 10 years in the Navy, and all he did was sit on the sub, listening to radio frequency and making sense of it to keep you and me and all other Americans, and in some instances, the world safe. That was his job. And he goes through this with me. Plus, I have great software that we run everything through, plus great headphones, everything like that. So I'm going to try my absolute best to see if we can figure this out by really just diving deep into this entire thing. But it doesn't mean that I'm not going to miss something. So if I miss something, please let me know in the comments below. I really want to know what you guys are hearing too, okay? Let's go ahead and get started. The spirit box that I use for all this is called the PSP7. This is it right here. It just plugs in with the regular cord. Nothing fancy. This spirit box is the one that you see on all the ghost shows like Ghost Adventures, things like that. And then I just attach it to my old clunky JBL. So works wonders, works just all the time. We use this all the time and we usually get really good stuff. So hopefully this time we're going to also. Oh, one thing before we get started. This is very loud. And why do I use this spirit box when there are other spirit boxes out there that don't have much, much noise? And there are ways to manipulate this where it's not so noisy. I do that because spirits that have recently passed away or spirits that really haven't been contacted a lot, they have a hard time coming through. So you might not hear them yelling and yelling and yelling 
uh, through a spirit box that only picks up the loud noises, we might hear them whispering and talking through the uh, lower noises. So that's why it's important to wear your headphones if you can stand all the craziness of the noise that goes with it. So let's see what we can find out. Okay. Eight and an eight. Are you guys here with us tonight? kind of crazy we got a lot of weird things where the speaker was cutting out I don't know what it said of course I don't like to guess I like to go back through and professionally do it and then 
see what it comes out with because otherwise I might be so involved in getting the answers that I want to get that I just hear what I want to hear. So I'm not going to guess at all of what was said, but I hope you guys like this video. If you guys know of any cases like this where maybe someone did something horrible and they, you know, there's question about, okay, this person was normal and never did anything like this and then just one day they snapped. Were they possessed? Did something someone mentioned maybe they seemed demonic or crazy or just crazy cases? Please leave them in the comments below. I think it would be kind of fun to do some of these cases and see what we can find out. Also, don't forget to check out the Enchanted by You merch. Uh, I just love the little bunny. My daughter drew it a while back. I have a new bunny coming out too, but this is always going to be my favorite. Check it out at teespring.com slash Enchanted by You for all kinds of cool stuff. We're going to be putting up some new bunnies, like I said, soon. So yeah, hope everyone's doing good. Hope you like the new twist on the video and everything. And I hope to be hearing from you guys soon about what ideas you have that we should be doing. Love y'all. Talk to you soon. Bye.